Alright, here's example 3 with concavity and points of inflection. So, same as the last two videos, different function. Uh, find the points of inflection of h of x equals 3x to the 4th minus 9x plus 17. Uh, and also, where is h of x concave up, where is it concave down? So, um, the first thing you want to notice is, uh, are there any domain restrictions? And uh, No, there aren't any. This is just a polynomial. So, uh, we're okay here. Okay, it's just uh, 3x to the 4th minus 9x plus 17. So, no square roots, no uh, division, nothing going on like that. So, everything's fine there. So, uh, let's just jump right in with derivatives then. So, h of x equals 3x to the 4th minus 9x plus 17. Let me zoom in a bit here. All right, so uh, the derivative h prime of x equals uh, 3 times 4x cubed, which means 12x cubed, and then minus 9x, or minus 9. Okay, uh, minus 9x, the derivative becomes minus 9. And then plus 17, that's just a constant, so its derivative is 0. Okay, so then uh, that's the first derivative. Now we want to get the second derivative, so we just take the derivative again. So this becomes 12 times 3x squared, or in other words, 36x squared. Okay, and then minus 9 is just a constant, so uh, its derivative is 0. So this is just 36x squared. Okay, so now that's our second derivative, so we want to know where's this guy 0, where is it undefined? Well, it's undefined nowhere, right? It's just 36x squared, any value of x is okay. So this is defined everywhere, so we only want to know where is that 0. Well, if we take it, set it equal to 0, and solve for x, what are we going to get? Uh, the only value of x that makes this 0 is just uh, x equals 0. Okay, so in other words, 36x squared equals 0. Uh, the only value of x that's going to work is x equals 0. Okay, that's the only one that's going to give us uh, anything. So, and again, that's not a point of inflection yet. We don't know. It's a possible point of inflection, right? So we have to do uh, our sign chart, S-I-G-N sign chart, uh, like in the last couple of videos. So let's go ahead and set that up. So uh, h double primed. Okay, here's our sign chart. And then we're going to label uh, 0. All right, so we pick one number from this interval, negative infinity to 0. One number from this interval, 0 to positive infinity. So let's pick negative 1 and 1, just because those are nice, simple numbers. Uh, okay, so if we pick, uh, let me use red again. Blue's running out. Uh, let's say we want to pick uh, negative 1. Then we have h double primed of negative 1 equals what? Well, here's h double primed of x. It's 36x squared. Okay, so if we want to use this, okay, we're going to use that for our calculations. So h double primed of x is 36x squared. So h double prime to negative 1 is 36 times negative 1 squared. Negative 1 squared is 1. 36 times 1 is 36. So that's positive. OK? So again, it's positive in the entire interval. We know we can say that. Um, and we talked about that in a, a few videos now. So um, what about h double prime to 1? Well, that's going to be 36 times 1 squared. 1 squared is 1, 1 times 36 is 36, which is also positive. Okay, so positive here, positive there. Now before we move on, you might have noticed, okay, 36x squared, well, if x isn't 0, isn't that always positive? So we always have positive number times a positive number. So can we just say right away that's positive, that's positive? Uh, yeah, actually, we can. If you can notice that, that's totally fine to say that. But I just want to show you all the details, you know, in case um, you might have to show a little more work than just that. It really depends on who your instructor is. Um, but, you know, if you can see those sorts of things, that's great. You know, go ahead and use those shortcuts if you can see them. But, um, you know, if you can't, that's totally fine, as long as you understand the details of how to do the process here. So that's what I want to point out here, are the details. And if you can see these shortcuts, uh, that's totally great. Go ahead and do that. So again, 36 is always positive. x squared is always positive, as long as x is not 0. Uh, which it isn't over here and over here. So positive, positive. Okay, so anyway, um, well, what does that mean? So uh, do we have a point of inflection at x equals 0? Uh, no, we don't, because remember, a point of inflection is a point where the concavity changes. Does the concavity change? No, because the second derivative is positive here and positive here. So that means the function is concave up here and concave up here. 
Okay, so the function does not change concavity, which means uh, this is not the point of inflection. So that's actually pretty much it for this example um, with you know, some more subtle details I'll point out, but let's go ahead and write down the answer here. So uh, let me zoom out a bit also. Find the points of inflection of h of x equals da 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 da. So uh, there are no, no points of inflection, POI for short, no POI, because the concavity does not change sign. Or sorry, sorry, the second derivative does not change sign and the concavity does not change. Sorry, it doesn't make sense to say concavity changing sign. Uh, it's the concavity changes or the second derivative changes sign. Okay, so the second derivative is always positive, so it never changes sign. Uh, it never becomes negative, basically. So where is h of x concave up? Uh, h of x is concave up on negative infinity to zero. Now you could say comma or union uh, zero to positive infinity. And again, some people are picky about how to write that, so just uh, make sure you're aware of that. Um, and then where is h of x concave down? Uh, h of x is concave down nowhere. So h of x is concave down nowhere. Okay. So that's our answers for the other part. So just a little more uh, detail here. So you might be thinking, okay, well, it looks like uh, h double prime is positive everywhere, so can't we just say h is concave up all the time? Well, uh, no, we want to be a little more careful than that. Um, if you want to be informal about it, uh, you can kind of say that, but it's, I, I really wouldn't recommend that. It might be marked wrong. Um, and it technically is wrong because, uh, you know, what does it mean to be concave up? That means the second derivative is positive but the second derivative is not positive at, a, uh, at x equals zero. Okay, because when x equals zero, the second derivative is zero. Okay, so if the second derivative is zero, then the function can't be concave up there by definition. Okay, so the function is concave up on this interval and on this interval. So everywhere to the left of zero, everywhere to the right of zero, the function is concave up, but exactly at zero, uh, the function is not concave up or concave down. So you really do want to keep these intervals separate and you don't want to say negative infinity to positive infinity. You know, that's, uh, that's not entirely correct. Okay, you don't, because you know, this interval does not include zero, that does not include zero, so their union also should not include zero, uh, and it doesn't. Okay, so in this interval, h of x is concave up. It's also concave up here. Okay, so it's concave up in their union, but uh, it's not concave up at zero, so be careful about that. Uh, you really do want to keep these separate. Okay, so just a little detail to worry about there. So that's uh, example three with concavity and points of inflection. And this was an example where we saw that there were no points of inflection. So like we mentioned in the last video, that could happen. You might have one point of inflection, uh, no points of inflection. You might have more than one point of inflection. Uh, anything is possible, really. It just depends on the function you have. So that's example three.